Hello, John. Vanakkam. Vanakkam. Uh, you know, it's a Tamil New Year, right? You yesterday taught it to me. And to, yes. Yes. And it's a new year yesterday and today. Oh, it, oh. We celebrated it. Congratulations. Yes. It's many things today. Yes. Uh, including the sinking of the Titanic yes. happened uh, in 1912 mm -hmm. on this mm -hmm. day. So, so um, this is our second episode. Uh, many of you have already probably watched uh, the first episode is John McConnell. He's a Winchester resident and uh, me too. And uh, first let me thank uh, Wincam and uh, David Gauthier, the director, for giving us the time and the space and all the encouragement to come here today. And thank you to John too. And um, uh, in the first episode, John told us that he, ha he wears three hats. So I won't say anything further about John. I leave it to him and uh, he will explain or he will tell us about him, himself, just for the introduction. And then I'll ask the questions. John, it's your turn. I don't know where to begin. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am a native of Massachusetts, born in Pittsfield and grew up in Michigan and then uh, came back to Boston uh, for graduate school in 1972, and I've been here ever since then. Uh, graduate school was at Harvard uh, in the Graduate School of Design, where I took a master's degree in architecture, and my professional life since then has been as an architect, uh, working first for a couple of firms in Boston, and then in 1987, I did uh, the two stupidest things I've ever done in my life that actually worked out just great, which is I quit my job and started my own firm, and I bought a ruined house here in Winchester and began to renovate it. <laughs> and so, and it was just in 1987 is when the economic bus drove off the cliff uh, and there was a great recession that happened uh, that year. And so it was um, a difficult time, but uh, I was full of energy as a young man and everything worked out fine. So I've been in Winchester uh, since then, 34 years now, and um, I'm very happy to, to be here. This is my, my town. Oh, that's good to know because I live in Winchester too and I love Winchester. So um, let me ask you a few questions. Sure. John. Now, um, where did you go for your schooling and where did you live, start your, as a child, as a student? As a child, I lived in Grand Rapids, Michigan, uh, which is the second largest city in the state of Michigan. Uh, and one of the few, it's in western Michigan, uh, only uh, 30 minutes from uh, Lake Michigan, which for all intents and purposes looks just like Cape Cod. It looks mm -hmm. like an ocean mm -hmm. and uh, is a a fairly well-to-do, well-educated city and um, survived the, the bad uh, e economic crash of 2008 better than any other place in the state of Michigan. I wasn't there by then. <laughs> I went, uh, did my undergraduate work at Michigan State University and, uh, and then uh, lived in Greece for a year teaching English to Greek children. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, and then uh, came back a year later, uh, mm -hmm. worked in a restaurant while applying to graduate school, mm -hmm. uh, and then um, got into Harvard and uh, came to Boston in 1972 uh, and uh, lived in Cambridge uh, until 1987. Do you have any siblings? I have one sister who is uh, four and a half years younger. Mm -hmm. Uh, whom I just saw for the first time in a long time because of COVID, uh, I was able to now travel to their house in Richmond, Virginia. Yes, where you, did, it was, you did tell me when I was asking you for dates, you said you were going to see your sister. I know. Well, now yes. that I'm fully vaccinated. Yes, <laughs> me too. Yeah, and them yes. and they as well. And mm, so uh, mm. we had a wonderful time. Yeah. Uh, the weather was uh, spectacular. And of course, everything is Mm. far ahead of mm. us in terms of flowering trees and right. leaves and all of that. It's very beautiful. Oh, they are ahead of us? We are on the East Coast, right? They're, well, it's a inland bit, a bit, yes. but yeah. So it's a little warmer, right? Yeah. Mm. So, um, 
So you decided you were very interested in architecture. Yes. So at what point did you feel that you wanted to paint? Well, I always have painted. Um, uh -huh. I've been, uh, from elementary school on, um, uh, engaged with art, um, winning mm. prizes even as a child uh, for things to do. And mm. then it's, it's come and gone uh, over the decades here. Mm. Um, but the, uh, the, the part of the curriculum uh, in architecture school was on Saturday mornings was uh, life drawing classes. Mm -hmm. And uh, we all sketched models and had a good time. And I learned that I, uh, it reaffirmed that I had some uh, artistic talent. Mm -hmm. And then um, that it sort of went away for a while as I started a new job and started out my career. And then in uh, 1991, uh, I started taking, um, for two years, I took portrait painting classes uh, at UMass Lowell and uh, taught by a wonderful Boston artist and uh, that encouraged me to continue going. Uh, and uh, in the middle of that, I discovered uh, down at uh, the Guild of Boston Artists on Newbury Street, a painter I'd never heard of named Dennis Sheehan who was having a one-man show, and this, his landscape paintings were so beautiful, I fell on the floor and said, what can I do? How, I want to be that person. And right. uh, so uh, I ended up uh, studying with him right. for a number of years. So the and interest in design and so on, is that, is that the reason you came over to the East Coast, to, to the design school? Uh, well, uh, no, I came here because I got into Harvard and ah, uh, everything in my mm -hmm. whole life has changed from that point forward. Mm -hmm. um, apart from, I think I said this before, apart yeah. from being born to the parents that I was born to, mm -hmm. probably uh, being a student at Harvard is the second most important thing mm -hmm. uh, that ever happened to me in my life. What so. was your father? And your uh, mother, father was, uh, he had uh, uh, a degree in business mm -hmm. uh, and uh, after the war finished his degree at Penn State University mm -hmm. and ended up working for General Electric mm -hmm. in Pittsfield, uh, which is why I was mm -hmm. born there. And then uh, he changed jobs and was in sales for George Hormel Company, the mm -hmm. meat people, right. and became um, a, a, the sales manager right. uh, and ended up living uh, in Hingham here mm -hmm. in Boston mm -hmm. uh, and then retired to Williamsburg, Virginia. Okay. And your mom, so, was she a working mom? Or? She was not uh, ah. and uh, so she was taking a care of. And this was right. the 50s That's and nice. 60s. And That's nice too yeah. in some ways. So um, she was a den mother for the Cub Scouts. Also. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. So um, let's uh, I think uh, the pandemic would have helped you staying indoors and painting away. Have you done a lot of painting these last few months, staying no, in? No, I've been actually busy as an architect, believe it or not. Really? Uh, yeah, most of it as a volunteer. Uh -huh. uh, I'm uh, in the middle of finishing a set of working drawings for a beautiful big house uh -huh. uh, in Woburn mm -hmm. for a friend of mine. And then all my other stuff is kind of volunteer stuff. Uh -huh. um, the big project I'm doing uh, now is renovating the rectory for our church. W Ruba and yes, I go to the same church. Same church. Uh, Epiphany Church here yes. in, in Boston. We have a new rector yes. uh, who is absolutely wonderful. And uh, the uh, rectory that the church owned, uh, mm -hmm. our previous rector was married, no children. So it was just two people living there. And now there are six and two dogs. Were you there and when we were invited to meet the, the former rector? Yes. And I went to the rector's house. It's a lovely old uh, It's house. a very beautiful house oh, beautiful uh, down house. by Wedgemere Station. Yeah. But not adequate for six people. There weren't enough bathrooms. Yeah, now with the children. Yeah. Yes. And two young boys. Yes. And uh, so um, I did a set of drawings for... Uh -huh. Uh -huh. renovating that mm. and uh, on several floors and we're uh, this coming Monday just uh, four days from now will right. construction will begin oh that's good uh, so I'm looking forward to right. to that so John just mentioned we both go to the same church the parish of the Epiphany 
for years either John will sit in front of me or if I come a little late I'll be behind him if I come early I'll be seated in front of him <laughs> we only said hi how are you that's it and till uh, only a couple of years ago uh, John was asked to speak in our church after th church we usually have meetings at Hadley Hall and uh, John was talking to us about the renovation in church and I sat up and thought oh my gosh he's an architect <laughs> and then <laughs> then when I was looking for uh, somebody to invite I thought John would be a very good candidate to have over and last year thank you for coming uh, two years ago, I think. Yes, oh, yes. it was, a, it was yes. a pleasure. Yes. And your having raised the subject of, of speaking about architecture yeah. introduces my, my th the third aspect Hat. of my personality, yes. uh, which is teaching. I've, I've mm. been doing a lot of lecturing yes. here and there, including, including very recently a, a Zoom presentation mm -hmm. uh, for the Jenks Center. Mm. Uh, and uh, this is, uh, I'm, I'm now uh, 41 years into uh, being an adjunct uh, professor at Boston College of Architectural History. Alas, this past year, the, my course, along with many, many others, was canceled. Um, the university canceled a number of humanities courses, mostly, mm -hmm. uh, to focus more on STEM education, on science and technology and I business, see. Mm -hmm. uh, more kind of career-oriented mm -hmm. uh, teaching. Right. So we'll see if my course comes back again uh, next year or not. Uh, mm. I just had an email saying, are you interested in teaching next spring? And Do you like teaching? I you love like teaching, yeah. Hopefully you will, they'll call you back and you'll get a... We'll see. Uh, Do you try other universities? Other? I, I haven't. Um, mm. uh, I may, yeah. uh, if this doesn't work out, but I have a great fondness for Boston College right. too. So. Right. There's a whole new administration in the college that I teach in, mm -hmm. and they may be completely rethinking the curriculum. Right. Right. I don't know. Right. So let's go back to your beautiful painting that oh. we, up he we have up here. So let's ask John to um, tell us about the scene and uh, or how long it took you, <laughs> when you did it. Okay. Know? Yes. This is a, a recent painting yeah. that's called uh, Along the Ipswich River. And uh, it actually had a previous life as a different painting. So this is painted over top of an earlier painting, some of which still remains visible, uh -huh. uh, but uh, the composition changed uh, for the better, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, it's and beautiful. it's it's lots of different things. Um, mm -hmm. Many of my paintings have water in them because mm -hmm. they um, they do an interesting thing reflecting the sky uh, and, and, and other things, the, the landscape uh, that surrounds the water. Uh, for me, the, the whole point of making a painting is, is uh, to create a mood, and the mood is usually determined by the sky, mm -hmm. and usually that means early or late in the day, and perhaps uh, stormy or maybe... Um, uh, winter or something like that. It, not mm -hmm. happy blue sky in the summertime. That's, right, I'm not, right. I have some of those yes. uh, elements in my paintings, but I generally tend not it's to beautiful. do that. Mm. Uh, and then this is uh, typical of the, the kind of painting that I admire is a late 19th and early 20th century American school of painting called tonalism, mm -hmm. in which uh, there is a dominant color in a painting. Uh, it, at sunset, that's easy. Everything turns yes. orange, mm. and uh, mm. so this is a summer painting, and uh, so everything is green here. Green is the, the theme of the painting, and uh, another element of the painting that I learned from the people that I studied with is that uh, every good painting has a path in it that leads you back into the painting, so it makes you want to pretend in your mind that you're entering into that space, mm -hmm. uh, even though it's a completely imaginary kind of place, uh, you, you want to kind of go there. And so uh, there's the, the stream is the obvious way of doing that, mm -hmm. but there are also sort of hidden things here. 
Mm -hmm. uh, the foreground has uh, the river bank steps down. There's a kind of dark element, right. and right. it introduces a kind of zigzag motion back into, into the painting. Them. And then uh, the other compositional element here is uh, a series of parallel diagonals uh, in the branches, in the tree trunks, and in the pattern of light and dark going all the way back into the background. We see mm. elements mm. of diagonals in, and, and that's another sort of thing that creates the illusion of space, uh, as well as the alternation of bright light and shadow, right. and more bright light and shadow. So, so earlier you were saying it, the painting makes you go back, yes. right? So after yeah. a few days you look at it and then think there's something else you need to do and you go back to it. Yeah. It's, I mean, a painting is just uh, oil and dirt. Yeah, you can uh, go over and over. On a flat surface, yes. but the, the, you know, to give the impression mm. of three dimensions is, mm. I think, the point of, at least for me, of landscape painting. Yeah, it's beautiful. So, um, have you been successful in, uh, you haven't had an exhibition yet, have you, since Nothing last Nothing has happened met? in the last year. Mm. Um, so uh, prior to that, yes, I had uh, paintings in a number of galleries and they were being sold. Uh -huh. In fact, uh, well, the- congratulations. Well, <laughs> thank it's you. Good. The, the best of them uh, was yes. uh, up in Kenny Bank, Bunkport, uh -huh. Maine, uh, the Mast Cove Gallery. Yes. And uh, the woman uh, who owned it, Jean Briggs, uh, mm -hmm. for 45 years or something, retired in her 80s uh, in uh, 2019. Right and uh, decided to close the gallery, uh, mm. which was in her house, a uh, big mm. Greek revival house with mm. lots of additions mm -hmm. on the back. So it was a, a large gallery that rambled through this very mm. large house, which she sold. And uh, the last celebration was the famous uh, Christmas prelude uh, that they have every year. Right. It's very beautiful and mm -hmm. thousands of people pack into right. town. She had a big closing party. Right. I was there. There was music and lots of people. And she sold six of my paintings. Really? That, that, Congratulations. That night. Yeah, it was a banner night for me. Yeah. So that was great. Yes. The woman who is buying it and yeah. her, uh, her boyfriend are from San, San Francisco. He's the son of a famous painter, Richard mm -hmm. Diebenkorn. And uh, she grew up in Kennebunkport. Mm -hmm. And so they wanted to have a house there. So they bought this house and initially thought that they would just live in it. But then um, she decided it might be a good idea to take the, the back piece of the house and continue having, uh -huh. having it as an art gallery. That's nice. So one of the uh, painters who had shown marine paintings in this gallery uh, mm -hmm. decided to take it on and manage it. Mm -hmm. And he asked me, uh, he asked only uh, four of the artists there to continue on. Mm -hmm. And so I took last May 13 of my paintings up there and the gallery did no one ever no one ever came I and mean, there was nobody uh, in town maybe they thought that uh, this whole house was sold there's you need more advertising no there's it looks the same uh -huh. and all of that and it's uh, there's enough marketing and everything uh -huh. there was simply no one in town because of covid oh, shutdown that's right no tourists this is not a good nothing. time no. Not a good time. Maine had its borders yes, closed yes. and all of that. So. Everywhere it's just, so. so my hope is that this summer things will free up a little bit. That yeah. now that people are getting vaccinated, they'll feel a little more comfortable traveling. I intend to go up. Yeah. Uh, I can't buy my yeah. own paintings, but. <laughs> yes, I know. Lots of people are now moving around because they have had their second shot and they are moving around. So schools are reopening or yeah. reopened. So. I guess we breathe easily a little more now, Boston, hopefully. Boston College just announced that it's going to have commencement in May yeah. uh, live yeah. uh, in the stadium, except no guests, graduates only, oh. and uh, some, a few faculty members. Yeah, because but at they least have to uh, look to the seating, and yeah. if it's uh, six spaces apart, they need a whole lot of arrangements and yeah. a lot of work. and. But that's Harvard still, their commencement's uh, that, going to be yes. online only, mm. so. Mm. So, thank you very much. Yeah, do you have anything more that you want to share with us? You can uh, tell us something? Well, uh, no, yes. I, my, uh -huh. I, my heart is in the painting, and yes. so I'm anxious to sort of uh, right. be able to clear some of the architecture away and go mm -hmm. next door to the 
my painting studio next right. door to my office uh, here in Sanborn uh, House. Yes, and you do have a studio here too, right? Where I you do. paint yep. in Sanborn? Uh, up at Sanborn House. And yes. normally, um, the, uh, uh, there are a number of my paintings on display there, yes. uh, but uh, the whole Sanborn House has been closed down. We haven't been able to have any events there at all. Yes. Uh, and you so you want to tell our viewers exactly where Sanborn House is in Winchester. It's on Church Street. It's it's uh, it's actually it's on High Street, High uh, right next to the Ambrose School. So it's I Church see. Street extended across yes. Cambridge Street, mm. and it's a wonderful uh, venue. It's uh, operated by the Historical Society. Yes, a wonderful place to have events, mm. and there's, we've hosted many, many, many. It's a beautiful many, place. Yeah, Lovely it's, a, it's a gorgeous house. I've been for a couple of uh, events that took place there, and uh, very spacious and. How old is Sanborn House? Any idea? Uh, I think 1906. So That's it's more old. than 100 years old. What's the architecture there like? What would you call it? It's neoclassical. Mm -hmm. um, it has big, you know, two-story high columns yes, that are I Roman that. Mm. ionic columns and mm. various other elements of Roman architecture, mm. classical architecture. Was that uh, something that was happening at that time? 1906, around that time? Oh, there time? was a lot happening at that time. Uh, the same. Yeah, uh, that the, right at the turn of the 20th century was a, a huge melting pot of ideas, mm. uh, old ones and new ones. Modernism was coming around. Yeah. Uh, same thing in painting. Yeah. Uh, the 1913 Armory Show in New York was a, a stunning mm. introduction of Americans to European modernism. Right. And <laughs> nude descending oh, staircase and all of that um, you know yeah. people didn't know what to make of that and it was also a great watershed in the history of architecture with mm. the just the beginnings of modernism yeah. as uh, the 19th century habit for reviving old styles was mm. coming to an end there, there was a revival right yeah all the old style right so uh, thank you very much for coming john you're welcome thank it's my you. pleasure thank you for having me yes it was okay. great having you in our wind camp studio so hopefully you will do more paintings and you will have more to tell us maybe next year. I hope. Yes, thank you. Okay. okay.